So, good morning, dobro jutro, Mr. Adnan Cherimagic. You are analyst at the Think Tank European Stability Initiative. So, this is the second interview uh, of a round of six interviews for each uh, Western Balkan uh, committed country to EU integration. So, yesterday we did with Albania, today with Bosnia and Herzegovina. So, you are from a country of a population more approximately 3 million.800,000 people. Out of that, uh, the country counts uh, 2,436 positive cases of COVID-19, and unfortunately, 151 people who died from that. So my first question, given the dysfunctionality of the federal state of Bosnia and Herzegovina and the high level of citizen distrust towards the authorities, how would you assess uh, the performance of the central and federal uh, institutions? And perhaps, perhaps also, what about the preparedness of uh, Bosnian health infrastructure? Assessment depends on one's expectation of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And I would say that, uh, uh, in general, expectations from Bosnia and Herzegovina are very low because the country has an image of a rather complex uh, country with rather complex constitutional architecture, with many institutions, with uh, too many politicians, and with uh, basically poor outcome of these institutions because Bosnia and Herzegovina belongs to a periphery of Europe uh, today in economical, social, uh, political, uh, political terms. So if you look at it from that point of view, you cannot but conclude that Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, reacted very, very well to, to the crisis uh, with, with the pandemic. The health segment uh, was basically a reaction by 13 different health systems on a population of 3.5 uh, uh, million. And the numbers that we see today are compared to the numbers uh, in other European countries are uh, low. Uh, uh, it seems that the measures that the governments throughout the country have been introducing when it comes to social uh, distancing when it comes to closing uh, down schools, kindergartens and universities, that they were in a sense timely and that they've prevented from a, from a more serious uh, outbreak. It seems that when it comes to the testing capacity, countries country has uh, evolved quite quickly or in a sense that more and more tests have been uh, uh, performed. In, uh, and that in that sense, uh, today we, we see that, for example, just one number doubling of cases is happening every 40 days, while on 15th of March, the doubling was happening every, every two days. So in those terms, it seems that Bosnian health systems and Bosnian authorities reacted, reacted well. When it comes to the mood of the people inside the country, I would say that throughout the crisis, there was this sense of lack of coordination, sense of, uh, in some parts of the country, politicizing of, uh, of, the, of the pandemic. And there was a sense of distrust that the health system can uh, respond to this uh, crisis and that politicians can respond to the crisis. Same goes for the economic response, which is at the moment more in the focus of public. There is this sense that, that the coordination is, is not doing well. In particular, when you look at uh, Serbia, Montenegro and Croatia, which are not the federal states, there is a sense that there things are being adopted and implemented in a more coherent and more, uh, and more uh, quicker way. For someone who has spent the better part of his life uh, in federal states like Belgium or like Germany or like Austria, and looking at how the pandemic has, has evolved and the reaction to the pandemic there, I wouldn't say that there is a big difference in, in a debate over, is it coordinated enough? Can Brandenburg do the same things as Bayern or, uh, or, or similar things? But when it comes to the quality of institutions and the, and the capacity in a sense of financial assets that the country has to react and to know where it needs to, to address its economic uh, measures, in that terms, Bosnia is doing significant significantly uh, worse than the other federal countries where I've had the pleasure to, to live in. And um, regarding the, the media coverage during that period, how would you assess the role of the independence of transparency of the, the media? Well, 
Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, media freedom has been in the in the latest media freedom index has been placed quite high compared to all other Western Balkan countries and compared to several EU member uh, member states. And in that sense, it seems that at least politicians were were very proud uh, to to uh, to this uh, point. But I, but I think when it comes to the crisis, uh, journalists played an important role in getting the attention and the focus of public on issues such as public procurement, on issues of uh, possible corruption when it comes to uh, acquiring medical equipment and protective medical equipment, and basically uh, putting to the uh, to the wider audience uh, the this sense or this inclination towards uh, corruption and nepotism. And in that sense, they played quite an important role in asking questions, in providing information. And I think that Bosnia-Herzegovina can be can be very proud for having such journalists uh, ready to, to ask questions and, and uh, hopefully get, get some answers. At the same time, one needs to be realistic. The employment uh, conditions of journalists in the country, attacks, be it verbal attacks or any other attacks, are going unnoticed. The uh, judiciary is not reacting uh, to these attacks. And the economic uh, situation of many uh, media in, in Bosnia-Herzegovina is not uh, good or it is not creating a circumstances uh, for, for journalists to be even more, uh, uh, even more direct and even more, uh, more concrete. I wouldn't go into the issue of public broadcasters, but there are a lot of challenges as well. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you. As we talk a lot about the world after the COVID-19, this is a debate we have in France and everywhere throughout the world, is there such a debate in Bosnia-Herzegovina? We were surprised to hear once by the end of April a statement from the same member of the country's presidency and the CERN, uh, the Milorad Dodic, who had voted to maintaining Bosnia as a state, though he was calling on Republika Srpska autonomy to be respected. So this is, is it maybe too much naive, optimistic to say that from the end of the year's 25th anniversary of the Dayton Agreement, a debate could occur on the future of the country, a debate on the constitutional changes. Do you think, is it optimistic to believe that? Do you see an opportunity or maybe a willingness of the, for the European Union to boost such perspective uh, of debate? I think that uh, one needs to be careful in a sense of uh, assessing or analyzing the current economic and political situation in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Because we are not known to have solid statistics. We are not known for having very transparent uh, financial uh, system and and very fine, uh, uh, very transparent insights into into what exactly the, the the situation in the governments and its bodies is. And I think that in that sense, we need to be careful when assessing how bad this the socio economic situation in Bosnia and Herzegovina will be in next two, uh, six or or eight months. At the same time, I think we need to be very concrete when it comes to what Bosnia-Herzegovina uh, uh, needs. If we look back in the, just during this pandemic and if we see all the issues with nepotism, with corruption, alleged corruption that have come to a surface, and what, when, when we see how much judiciary is struggling, how much police structures are struggling uh, to work their ways through these uh, through these issues or through these cases, uh, I think that we need to be very concrete and very detailed in a sense, how do we improve these points? Because obviously citizens are uh, angry that corruption is happening. They want judiciary to work. They want police uh, security structures uh, to work. So let's focus to use that energy and interest of the citizens to get these improvements uh, in, 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 these, in these areas. Uh, I think that some politicians would enjoy having EU and uh, and uh, uh, and focus be again directed on constitutional changes, on creating a new system uh, all over again, because in a sense, it also says that everything that was so far uh, done bad or poorly uh, was done because the system and the constitutional architecture is as it is, uh, and that basically they are innocent for all the, all the things that they were doing as part of that system. So I think that... Uh, 
opportunity is there in a sense that there is an interest of public that we can see clearly that journalists are bringing stories about current system not working properly uh, and that we see some politicians who are championing these changes that are uh, focused on on things that would improve uh, that would improve public procurement that would improve improve uh, judiciary and and the fight uh, of corruption and if we use that and get at the point in december where we have clearly made progress on on these issues i think that bosnia would be doing significantly better than uh, than uh, in december last year uh, to to say it uh, like that but again and that would be my last point i think that uh, it's also uh, important to understand that the focus of both the US, EU and international community in the region is on Kosovo-Serbia relations. It is not on uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina. And politicians in the country are aware of that, well aware of that. And they are also, uh, they uh, some of them who are not interested in reforms and, and changes are 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 using it uh, using it uh, in, in their in their advantage. Let's put it like that. So yeah, I think there is a chance if we use the energy in a, in a proper in a proper direction. Thank you very much, uh, Annan, for these words. Uh, I wish you good luck and hope to see you around I'm... in Paris or in Sarajevo. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. All the best thank in you. Paris. Thank you very much. Bye. And thank you for having me. It was a pleasure.